please welcome Ben Sabella. Meetings, they're all a part of our life. Work, social organizations. In fact, if I asked most people in this room to raise their hand if they had been in a meeting this week, most people would raise their hand. And some of us, like myself, have been in multiple meetings. So when I started to think about this topic and what I was going to talk about, I started to ask people at work about meetings they attend. And the funny thing is, at least 95% of them said that most of the meetings they attended were a waste of time. <laughs> that they were really wasting their time. It was a bunch of people in a room just saying opinions, but they never really accomplished the objectives that they wanted to accomplish. So I started to think, you know, why are all these meetings you know, we do in life, and why are everybody saying they're a waste of time? Well, I agree in the sense that a lot of waste of time, because most are unorganized, they're unplanned, they're unstructured, and they don't accomplish their objective. And let's face it, most of the work in life we do really comes down to working with other people. There's very few th things that you think about that you accomplish by yourself. I mean, if you write a book, you might be able to do it, but, you know, from my days in the military, I mean, everything was a team. I mean, and most of the things you do are accomplished with people. So meetings are a part of our life. And the good news is I'm going to give you some tips to how to effectively run your meetings and drive them to the point. Okay, first, the first thing I can say is, is planning. I did a little research at Duke Energy, and I talked to some of the people that helped prepare the meetings for the executives, like Jim Rogers. And for every hour of a meeting that they prepare for him, it's a, they prepare an hour for every hour of meeting. So if it's a two-hour meeting, they prepare two hours. Now, with us, a lot of times, people don't prepare. The first thing I can tell you is the first thing I ask them is that you get a clear objective what your meeting is supposed to be. So you write on your agenda at the top in bold letters, here is the objective of this meeting, here's what we plan on accomplishing. And that could be from a brainstorming, you could say this meeting is intended to do brainstorming um, and just generate ideas or it's to make a decision. But you establish that before you even get into the parts that are the discussion points of the meeting. Once you do that, you you come up with your discussion points and come up with the times. Uh, but you assign people to those roles. Something I learned at Toastmasters, I do my meeting now. I actually assign people to each one of those roles. Because we've all been in a meeting where half the people, or two people talk the whole time and the other people don't say a word. So now, if I invite someone, they're going to be on that agenda for part of it. And I assign another key task, which I rotate among my team. I put a note taker. And that note taker is responsible for taking all the meeting notes and all the decision points. And we rotated among the different people we started. So you have something you can send out right after the meeting. Um, and also, you, can, you get the ability to have people review it who weren't at, weren't at the meeting and understand what occurred. So after you get that meeting agenda in the Times, what I do is send the meeting agenda out probably about a day before the meeting. Because nothing ticks me off more than when I get a meeting agenda about five minutes before the meeting starts and I have action items that I've got to report to, to someone. So I want, you, you know, people need to send that out early and this gives you the ability to not only send it out early so people can prepare, they can also uh, provide you feedback and say, hey, I'm going to need more time. You know, five minutes isn't going to do it or I'm not going to. So now the day of the meeting, you're, you're prepared, you're ready to go. And this is, sounds simple, but another thing I've started to do is get there five to ten minutes early and make sure everything works. Nothing can be more disastrous. I mean, people will tune you out if you can't get your overhead working, if your conference call is not working. And I'll tell you, I've been in sales calls with my meeting where I'll basically, the CEO has said, we don't want you in our organization. If you, how, if you can't get a conference line to work, how can your software work? I mean, do you, have, do you take that kind of time and you develop your software if you can't do a sales presentation and have a conference line ready? Okay, so get it off to the right start. 
Now, to use a term we're, we're familiar with, once that meeting begins, you're the Toastmaster. If it's your meeting, you drive that meeting. And when you drive that meeting, you stay on agenda. I've started a little thing I'm talking to the Duke executives. One thing I do now is put a time watch. Uh, I project a time watch, and it has the time coming on it. And if we reach a point, and if we, we haven't made a decision, we make a decision, or we table it, and we decide that we want to follow on me. So we keep to the agenda. The other thing is there will be many ideas that people will generate that are good. That's, that's the purpose in some ways of me. But they're not contributing to the objective of the meeting. People will talk about anything I've found in some of these meetings. <laughs> so you also, what we call a parking lot, we'll put them in a parking lot, and then at the end you'll see we will, uh, we, we will address them in how we're going to take action on whether it's a follow-up meeting. Now, the two key points I can tell you about the agenda is, and what I've started doing, is the last step on that agenda, or the second to last step, sorry, the second to last step on that agenda, what I do is I have it for review what we've done in the meeting. And that is basically to come to a conclusion that we accomplish what we should have. And we, we basically stop at that time and we decide if we accomplished whatever decision we were to make or not. And then the final thing I just started to do, which has provided a lot of, uh, of help for my meetings, is I leave five or ten minutes in the agenda item for feedback. So anybody can give feedback. Hey, what could I have done better as a meeting head? What could we have done better? What didn't work? What works? What doesn't? And we've started to kind of empower the people in my meetings, and they've really started to, uh, to really participate a lot more. So here's the real good news, is you have a week you have an excellent opportunity every week to practice this. I mean, Toastmaster gives you that. Uh, and it's not just for learning how to speak. It, it's learning how to run meetings and being a leader. So you get to do this every week in different roles. And not only do you get to do it as roles, you also get to watch people who have done it for years, like Tim and other people. And I pick up points mm -hmm. on how to run my meetings better. Mm -hmm. So the good news is, is that if you practice this, you will drive your meetings to better, better uh, participation by people, more effective, and people won't think they're a waste of time. Mr. Postman.